The new new. Oh, God, save me. Okay. First off, how old is this album? 99? 99. Wait, how, how long ago was that? About 16, 17 years? No, yeah, 17 years ago. That was 17 years ago? Yeah. God this, damn. This is 21 years old this year. God damn. One hot minute is 21 years old. Um, you serious? Mm -hmm. So, if we were born when Mom broke her back in the shower, we would be old enough to drink? Nope. Oh, that's weird. So, Toy Story is old enough to drink. Yeah. Mortal Kombat. The Mortal Kombat movie is old enough to drink. No, Mortal Kombat 3. The video game. Oh, yeah, Mortal Not Kombat the movie. Three. Yeah, uh, the movie is old enough to drink. I love the first movie. Yeah, the first oh. movie is great. So, fuck that second one. After this, alright? We tried Peppers watching just, that on Netflix. Ch Chili Peppers just went away. And at this, like we've talked about before, this is 95 to 96. This is, to me, the, the peak of the great 90s music that I've, I've mentioned millions of yeah. times in our videos. The peak of the 90s music. Yeah. 95 the change to 96. Was in 97. After this, mm. the shift fucking, sh the focus shifted. Mm. More uh, towards electronic kind of poppy. Way poppy fucking, fucking gone. Whoa. Electronica was bigger. Fucking. Rap was bigger. Yeah, hip hop was way bigger. Uh, fucking Third Eye Blind and Matchbox 20 style things were bigger. There were the, the softer rock. Mm-hmm. And then the hard rock were fucking Christian guys like goddamn Creed. So, by the time 99 comes around, new metal has taken over, or is starting to really take over. You had Korn in 98. Limp Biscuit? Korn, that's the saddest thing. Korn was the only rock band that charted, really, in 98. Who else? What other hard... I think that Rob Zombie did. Rob Zombie did a little bit. He did decent in 98. But... What else really was there? Everything was bubblegum fucking boy bands and little... That's what they were marketing the most. Solo girl singers. That's what they were marketing the most. Was your girl, girl groups and, then and your, your boy fucking groups. Alanis Morissette felt like she had to fucking do that again with the video for thank you being all naked and shit yeah it's like she had to prove herself again thank you johnny thank you wendy thank you india <laughs> i don't even know the name i'm just making names up thank yeah. you ethan <laughs> thank you nathan thank you thank you silence um so, 99 happens, new metal happens, bubblegum pop happens. Marilyn Manson was kind of still there. Yeah, Marilyn Manson was still there. I mean, you, you, but, I mean, it's, everything shifts, everything moves. A little like popping. I mean, even the, 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 the swing nice revival swing. was there. Uh, ska was there. Oh. Okay, we did have uh, Mighty Mighty Boston is finally getting a hit. And... So, what does Chili Peppers do? 99. Where's Californication at? Fuck, it's dude, I don't one know. one of these. This is it. This is it. <sighs> Californication. I wasn't waiting on this album when it came out. I really no, wasn't. No, neither I was wasn't. I. And it just kind of came out. We were like, oh, Chili Peppers are back. This, I remember this album them. came out. I almost want to say, <coughs> is this album bigger than Blood Sugar Sex Magic? Is this album bigger than Blood Sugar Sex Magic? This this begins the second half of their their album yeah. career to me. Yeah, it begins a different generation. At that time, kids like Max and Jessica grew up with it. In their their age, you know, there are what I mean? kids that are more familiar with this nowadays than, than the the previous stuff. Like this this is your bridge. This is your bridge. They they. They walked over this to give you this. But this. that that really is the sequel to 
That's what Blood Sugar Sex Magic would be if it came out in 99. This album sucks. It does. It fucking sucks. And today was the first time I've listened to it all the way through. Now, and it's a comeback album. It's their in some big ways. Comeback it's album. a comeback it album. Yeah. How long With was the it? Classic 90, lineup. 95. John for to 99. Back. That's like four years. It's a four year gap. See, you got a four year gap in between all these albums. You got okay, 91, 95, and then 99. These are the only albums, three albums they released in the 90s. And you've got you've got really freaking awesome to pretty goddamn amazing to what the fuck? Uh, all right. When it first came out, and the scar tissue comes back, we get John Frusciante back. So all the everything sounds familiar. It all it sa- it starts to sound everything on this album is under the bridge 2.0. Just yeah. about everything. Everything kind of uses that that idea. And scar tissue is a fucking. And prime then they try example. to go back to the normal shit. And they try to. I love All Around the World. All Around um, the World's a great song. It's fun. I like Other Side. And I, I like the Californication song. Yeah. There are a lot um, of stuff that I like. I really like stuff off of here. But everything Like that one else. was it Get On Top. Gorilla! Contilla! Yeah. That's that song where, like, the first time, when you hear that, you're like, all right, dude. You have said nonsense. For 20 years now there's some really good fucking songs on here there really are like get on top like we just mentioned um purple stain don't even remember it that's the one i was telling you that he he likes to fuck girls on their period that's and then what he's road, talking road that is, is the, right. that, that is what he's saying in the song and the lyrics he likes to fuck girls on their period that is the edgiest the fucking chili peppers have gotten since then, and they were edgier before that. Like parallel universe sucks. I fucking hate scar tissue. I really fucking do. <coughs> I do like the music for it though. The music is fine. It's just it's a boring fucking song. A boring fucking song to me. And with that, because you being, heard it so many times. With that being the first big single, I even remember it was. When I first it was heard played it. the fuck out. I remember when I first heard it, I was like, eh, I did not fucking like it. And I remember Dad even bitching, "Why don't they fucking play funk anymore?" <laughs> and then when All Around the World came out, I was like, "There's a funk one." He's like, eh. "And but I mean, I like All Around the World because it's just I like the bass in it. You know, it, it's it's a heavy fucking no, no, song." No, 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 and no, no, I really like no, that. No, 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 he does there like he, he's just singing nonsense <laughs> that's yeah. what's great about him but like this album it just sucks there's good songs on here but it sucks the album fucking blows it does it fucking blows to me the only reason I got it was to complete I mean that's the only reason you should buy it. I mean there like Josh was asking us earlier or asking me earlier I must be a very big Chili Peppers fan no I'm a completionist I'm not a big fan I hold on to stuff that, like, I'm nostalgic about and I grew up with. And Chili Peppers is one of the things that I do remember growing up with and learning. They were one of the first bands that I learned. Oh, Chili Peppers. Okay. Yeah. The bass player's name is Flea. I was 13 when this shit came out. Now, so I will I say, to be 11. when I was 13, I was really jumping into... Heavy metal stuff. I was Marilyn Manson. I was Rob. We were listening to older shit. I was Rob Zombie. Um, <clears throat> Kid I was Rob. Prodigy. I was fucking Devil Without a Cause. Kid Rock. That's still a good fucking we, album to me. We were. We were also. Uh, we. I was Corn. Goddamn it! I was fucking Corn. Thirteen uh, years old. This Offspring. Green Day. Offspring. Fucking Green Day. Like like I said. Jesse and the Rockers. Jesse and the Rockers. Uh, like I said. Give a little shout out to our homie. The music Bob scene, McKenzie. the MTV music scene shifted, and so did my taste in music and in what I was pursuing Dude, to listen MTV to. Dude, MTV sucked at that year. Um, because I was I was getting into the more heavy things at the time. Was that the year the fucking issues came out? That was the year. Oh the issues my god! Came out. And uh, hey, at least we got uh, the last good. Uh, 
Rage Against the Machine album that year. Yeah. And, I mean, this... There was some good albums that came out that year. There I was, man. Say. There fucking was. Nine, I mean... <clears throat> 99 was a good year. And 98 and 99 didn't suck as bad. I mean, I talk more shit about it just because the focus was all about the <laughs> Yeah, the focus pop. wasn't on the good shit. But there was I mean, a hell, lot of 98, good shit happening. That, 98 was when the first Queens of the Stone Age album came out. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad year. That's a great fucking album, but no one knew of it back then. And fucking, this album was just boring as fuck to me. The whole fucking album is boring. Yeah, it is. The and it, and it blows me away just how many, how long they played these singles out, man. Like they still do. This I remember. I remember when this came out. MTV. I only ever saw Aeroplane maybe for that first year. I was still seeing music videos for this on MTV in 2002. Three fucking years later, I was still seeing no. the Californication video. I was. In 2002. And, the, the, and the, that the, year, the, they, they should have been playing By The Way. The other by the side way video. Out. I was seeing that still then. No, the you other, see, all right. You would see that on VH1. MTV would retire videos at a certain point. Well, okay, there you go. VH1. VH1 whatever would keep playing videos. By, at that time, VH1 and MTV... Just fucking, they bled together. Bled fucking together. They were in the exact same channel. I just remember there different was the, showy there was, shows. There was one point where we were up so late because we had to watch Jessica Max and wait till mom got off the goddamn computer so we could go to bed. I'm gonna say that shit because that shit happened. <laughs> um, so it's about five in the morning and dad's about to wake up and me and Travis are just nodding off watching fucking MTV and VH1 and they're a channel apart so we're just flip 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 and we notice Green Day's fucking warning is on both fucking channels just slightly out of sync yeah so it would I be it would be right there in sync when we would change it <laughs> you know what i mean like it would yeah. just slightly hit Hit back in tempo when you would change it back. Change it back and forth. It would just, you would hear like a little slight reverb and it was funny as shit. God, that was a great moment. We were like, television sucks and we're seeing the same thing on, on two different channels. And I mean, I love the music videos. I don't like the scar tissue video. It sucks. I like, I like the whole idea of playing the broken ass guitar. Uh, that is cool, but it's like, how are you playing a broken ass guitar that has no strings <laughs> on it? The goddamn neck is all twisted and shit. But I love the other side music video. That is a Amazing very abstract ass art on that video. Very, very and interesting. It's a it's a video that's reminiscent of like videos from like '93 <gasps> or '94. If that's what it always reminded me of was like it's early black and white. <gasps> yeah, early '90s music videos, and oh, I happened. really loved. The fucking Californication video, where it was like a video yeah, game. Yeah, it didn't age well. It didn't age well, but that's what's so cool about it because you at get the to time, see like Sega Genesis or no Sega Dreamcast kind of graphics. Yeah, at the time it looked like a shitty PlayStation One game, especially when it gets into the snowboarding section. Actually, I thought it looked better than what we can get on PlayStation One at like, the time. The snowboarding section looked like. What the fuck were those it popular looked, snowboard games at the time? Cool boards? Cool boarders. Cool boarders? It fucking looked like just like that. Maybe like slightly better, like you said, because like, movie you know I'm saying, it's slightly better than uh, we could have gotten on a PlayStation One. And like you it said, was it like didn't a Sega well. Dreamcast, but not a PlayStation Two. Like you like you say it didn't age well. It aged as well as a lot of those PlayStation One games did. And Dreamcast. Dreamcast, PlayStation One, Dreamcast, fucking, but Dreamcast I, it was an amazing ass video to me because it was at a time when uh, we were highly getting into video games at that time, um, and I thought that was a cool ass idea. It was like, damn, this, it looks like a video game, and yeah. there's like different kinds of video games. You had when it looked like Crazy Taxi for a moment, yeah, and then like he's running around in the city, you know. And then there's the little snowboarding part. Like each member of the band was like, was like you chose them yeah, as a there character. Was, there was that one moment where he was like hang gliding and shit. Yeah, that was some pretty cool shit. That was a really cool invented video. It's just, I like the song okay, but it's way too fucking long. Way yeah. too fucking long. 
And fucking A, man. This Cal- long, like I said, it's the longest song on the album. Dream of Californication. It's just on. Like, God, they do have the great on. I love John Frusciante, but he is what kind of put them into a more predictable. And that's very sad. What what is the word I'm looking for? Because John Travolta. John, John, John Travolta, Travolta. John Frusciante. John the French guy helped make the just band call him sound, John the French guy. John the French guy helped make the band sound better. And ultimately, helped make the fucking band stagnant as fuck, and very predictable. And that's the that's the very sad reality of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And predictable, way fucking predictable, way fucking stagnant. Just put up, put the fucking brakes on inventiveness, especially after an album that was as experimental and. Weird as one hot minute. I mean, it would make sense for their comeback album to be very reminiscent of Blood Sugar Sex Magic because that's the one that was big. That it's the Force Awakens. The problem people have with the Force Awakens. People have been doing it in music for years. That's what I tried to say. I love the Force Awakens, but yeah, and I understand why they did what they did because (laughs) it needed to fucking happen. But I'm sorry, musically. All right, musically, it's boring as fuck. It is. Um, because like you can't. Cause they don't hit all the right notes. All right, with mu- music is different than we we digest music differently than we do movies. Movies, you can't watch them every day and take certain scenes and watch that every day, like you can a song. Like you can't you can't turn you know on I mean? a movie while you're riding to work. Exactly. Um, unless you can just have the audio to that and you put it on your iPod, and that would just be stupid. So it made sense for them to just do something very similar to Blood Sugar Sex Man. That's so I don't I don't hate them for it, but it's a very boring ass record in the process. It is. And so with all my does, bitching, it, it it does it has one funky song. And I don't even care about the one funky song. But it's like you, there's only like one. You got, there's only like one funky song on one hot minute. But all the other songs are amazing on one hot minute. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna go to nothing, at least go back to what you started with is your funk. And they don't have any funk on Californication. They have that one intro track to lead you into. Under the Bridge 2.0. And it's it's very sad, man. I mean, I know a lot of people love this album, but I, I it just doesn't fucking do it for me. There's great fucking songs, like I've mentioned. See, it just the doesn't people that love this album never listen to it all the way through. They just listen to it for the radio tracks and that go up to track is, five. It is a fucking chore they to get skip, through this album. They skip track five and they go on to... Californication and they're done with it. It is a fucking chore to get through this album. Yeah, dude, they do not listen to the entire album. There's no way. And uh, so after this, we get what is what most people say is the most experimental. By the way, most experimental Chili Peppers album ever. Is what a lot of people say, and I will have to kindly disagree. Now, I say <laughs> it has slightly different moments than what is previously on other Chili Peppers. It is more more polished than any other Chili Peppers that I've heard before it. It is very structured. It kind of gets boring in parts. There are moments that I really do enjoy really good songs at some point but it's not one that I'm like you know I really want to go back and listen to By The Way it's not the first fucking Chili Peppers album I grab hell it's not even the fifth Chili Peppers album I grab (laughs) I mean there's a lot of Chili Peppers albums that I'm just saying that's like it's not that great the songs that were popular or were Radio songs, they're not that good. There are a 
few and far in between out of what, 16 fucking songs? Is it 16? It was something like that. Count. You're like looking at it right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, nine, nine. Sixteen. God. No. <sighs> See, I get bored at certain moments. There's a couple of good songs that have moments in them, but they all follow a similar formulaic pattern that is... It gets boring. Very boring after a while. Like, I heard this progression and this structure in the last ten songs. Can you give me something different that's not just bullshit filler? Don't let, don't make me feel like you're just trying to fill up your album. Like, you need to fill up your studio time. You know? Don't make it feel like that. Give me genuine good fucking songs. I want to listen to an album. I want to play every goddamn track. I don't want to have to skip around. I want to pick, pick and pull fucking songs that I like. You know what I mean? But there's not full songs I like off of this album. It's certain moments. Yeah. It's not like... Alright, there's a couple of tracks... Even though Californication sucks, there are more better songs. There are more better songs. And that's sadly the radio songs and that get on top. This one, it's like, well, there are moments of genius. It's like, this song has a cool part, but the song sucks. Yeah. This song has they, a cool they part, all but went the song to sucks. that familiar fucking Under the Bridge 2.0 fucking melody bullshit. But it even it isn't even that. This shit to me, this came out and I did not even know it came out. I was watching MTV 2002, 2003. 2002. And the By the Way music video was on, and it By the Way sounds so similar to the stuff off of Californication that I was like, damn, they're still putting videos for Californication? And no. at the end of it, and the little the little title thing on MTV, and it says, by the way, is the title of the album. I was like, fuck, when the hell did this come out? And that was the only song that I ever knew that I heard. And there's like two other songs on here that I heard when we listened to it just a minute ago, like the, what, the Zephyr thing? Zephyr song. The Zephyr song. Um, Midnight had a cool little intro. Mm. Uh, the best song on here is that Calbron. Yeah. The I love Mexican music. Uh, Spanish music and uh, <coughs> they do some cool stuff on here. <coughs> um, every fucking thing else. But like I'm saying, Cal Brown is still a good song, but it has moments. It's not like I want to hear the entire song. Like you didn't even want to hear the entire song. You got to a point where you're like, <coughs> like, all right, it's all. Once you get two minutes into it, you heard everything. You've heard everything. There are people say that this, like you said, they say this is the most experimental. <clears throat> it's not. It's, it's no. There are experimental moments. There are things that they toy with, like the harmonies. The harmonies are good. Um, and what is this? You said that that John, the French guy, John, the French guy, he fucking pretty much directed everything. Yeah. And this is pretty much his baby. And he, that's a major flaw. Yeah. That this album has. He. This. All right. I love the Chili Peppers, but this guy is not a great. Uh, uh uh. I love I love John the French guy. Yeah. As a musician, the dude is amazing. He's a he is a fucking genius, but a lot. His solo shit is better than what he has done for the Chili Peppers after. Blood Sugar Sex Magic. His solo shit is much better than what he has done with the Chili Peppers. Yeah. And, uh, this album just, there, there is nothing that I remember about it at all. When we, when, when, when this was over, I, I completely forgot about everything. To the point to where I actually thought Cal Brown was on fucking this album. Mm. I mean, like, 
it it sucks. It fucking sucks bad. Um, I I I got they nothing blend from that album. They blend together. They really blend together, but everything does. I'm done with. <clears throat> by the way, so Stadium Arcadium. Yeah, I <clears throat> I'm done with. By the way, as well. It's it's not fucking good at all. The only reason I bought this album is because Humpty Hump. When I first heard that, I was sitting in my shed. I was living with my parents at the time. And I had this little room. It's pretty much my little spot outside of the house where I can smoke weed and listen to music. And I had a little boombox. I bring in there. I had my drum set and I would play my drums and shit. But when I was like on break and shit, I'd smoke some weed and listen to radio. And we got this radio station from Auburn in Montgomery that uh, was a college radio station. They would play like Primus and Nine Inch Nails. Like I heard stuff off of uh, Year Zero. On See, the I radio. never heard any Year Zero on the radio. Yeah, dude, I heard, <clears throat> what is it, Push the Button? Or Capital G? Yeah. Or Capital G on the fucking radio and shit and I'm I'm never hearing you never hear new Nine Inch Nails you hear fucking Pretty Hate Machine that's it so that was a cool radio station I stuck with but they played Humpty Hump on there and I was like this is Chili Peppers this I like that that's fucking cool and they said this was off of a Stadium Arcadium and at this time this album has already been out at least a year. And I was like, that. I don't really care for any of the songs that I heard on MTV or the radio from this. Yeah. Like, the first one I heard was that Danny California that had that video that was a very entertaining video. Yeah, it was, that's a very good music video. But as soon as you see it and you hear it, you're like, I know what you're going for. Like, that was my first introduction to that song, was that video. It was like, okay, you're playing fucking Last Dance with Mary Jane. Your video is showing progression of every decade of music. And then your solo is Jimi Hendrix. You're paying homage to rock and roll. Or whatever. That's all I got out of that song. Other music videos, the one for, is it, I don't know if it's Hey Baby or Tell Me Baby or Snow Hey O. Oh. One of those is fucking ridiculous where they have a bunch of, you know those stupid videos where they have people talking about sad shit? They'll hold up a sign, says something, or they'll talk over the music and shit, and you're like, I just want to hear the song, shut the fuck up. They did that. Really? Yeah. See, I, I actually never saw any music video well, for this would, album until you just showed me that, Danny. Yeah, Brown I was living out. with mom and dad, and I was still into the Beavis and Butthead things. If I had a chance to watch music videos and I knew they were going to be on for a couple hours, I was still going to watch music videos. Mm -hmm. Like... If I had nothing else to do, because, you know, I had no internet, no fucking car, no job, staying around at the house all the time, you don't want to watch fucking Billy and Mandy on Cartoon Network, <laughs> you <can just> fucking <laughs> watch some goddamn music videos. But that's the only reason I bought this album, because I was like, well, if that song is on there and it's a double album, it's bound to have more funk on it. And in some ways it does in certain doses. Like, the first album, Jupiter, has more funk on it than Mars. Mars is more relaxed and chill and melodic. But none of these songs... I mean, I like, I really do like this album because I didn't, the, like I said, 
The only reason I bought it was because it had that and it was two fucking discs long. You're going to sleep. No. My eyes are burning. Why? Rubbed tobacco in them. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah. Ow. There are some. There are a lot of songs that stand out to me on this. Uh, we believe. That's great. Uh, Ready made. I just fucking learned that. Listening to it just now. Remember when I pulled up the bass and I was like, "That's what he's doing." God damn it, Flea! Why aren't you doing something easy now? I mean, like, or hard? Like, what happened? Um. Desecration Smile, that was a great song. Great song. Um, especially in Michigan. That's the one where he's like, Double chance and ballin' fans. That's funny. Um, I mean, there's a lot of tracks that I can pick out that I like off of this, but I had to skip around. It's not one that I can listen to the entire fucking album. This, <clears throat> I remember, uh, I'm, there you go. I remember when these, I'm going to eat some chips. I remember when these came out, and, uh, oh, six, this is ten years old. I remember when, uh, Danny California came out and I first heard it, and I was like, they're still fucking doing this. They're still fucking doing yep. this. I mean, it fucking blends in. I, I dream of Danny California, mm -hmm. or fucking um, Californication. I mean, it bleeds to me. And then the snow heyo. I like the fucking little guitar riff and shit, but it's another one that's way too fucking long. Yeah. Now I remember. Uh, Stars liked the Snow Heyo song, and she bought the uh, the album. And um, I never heard the album uh, all the way through. And today I heard it all the way through. And uh, if I were to pick a third Chili Pepper album, a third good one, it would be it would be this. Because after hearing the abysmal fucking really by the way this one was just an opportunity for them to return to form but give you more of the same let loose a little bit and 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 just be a little more self-indulgent i mean this is this is a lot of shit to endure. And yeah. I, I love double disc albums, but your fucking double disc album. You're albums asking a lot to. for me. Yeah, man. They were yeah. asking a lot. This That's like Californication times two. This is two hours of my life. I'm two hours close to death after listening to this album all the way. Well through. we skipped to do a lot. I mean this I remember more about this one than I do, by the way. And oh yeah, well, by the way, ugh. it's better than Californication because it feels like they're having a little more fun on it. You you can hear that they're having more fun on it, whereas, like I said, Californication just needed to fucking it needed do to what get it, out of the way. It needed to fucking do what it needed to do. But here's the thing, it still hasn't gone away. Yeah, and this 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 sounds identical to Californication. There are many songs on here. Like, this is still them being stagnant. This is them fucking being... But it's the best stagnant they've ever been. Yeah, and that's only because there are so many fucking songs. This is, at this, this is as good an album as it's as shitty of a fucking album. Because like if I said the problem I had with Blood Sugar Sex Magic is it's too long. This one takes the fucking cake. For oh that. my god, yes it does. I mean, where it's good, it's good, but man, does it drag? It drags. It really. And fucking it's not does. like oh, I'm listening to two completely different albums. No, you're not. You're not. 
They might be titled Jupiter and Mars, but you're not fucking listening to two separate albums. You're yeah. listening to Side 1 and Side 2. And it's... There are as many good songs as there are as many boring songs. And... Yeah, it's like if you could take all the good songs, you could probably have a 12-track album. You really probably could. <laughs> you really probably could. You probably have a really good ass album. One <clears throat> really good ass album, and then maybe take all those other tracks and make a B side. I mean, it's just. You know they were gonna split that apart, like System of a Down. Oh really? Yeah. Could fuck that shit. Didn't they like also release? Wasn't there more songs recorded for this, and then they released a bunch of them on an EP? I want to say somebody in the comments mentioned that several years ago, that uh, they had... I want to say they did that recently. Here recently they released an EP of stuff that they were just now doing that wasn't released on the last album. But this is, and the only reason I would say it's number third good, just because... I took more from it. Like, n to me, none of them <clears throat> beat. Well, the John French Well, you French know what? Guy. You know what? No, this can't be number third good. You want to know why? It's not over yet. Because Mother's Milk is better than this. Mm -hmm. The first album in Freaky Style is better than this. So I, I, I take all that back. Uh, bec that's what this shit is doing to me. It's making me forget yep. the greatness because I'm stuck in a fucking... You're in John the French Guy. I am stuck in a fucking parallel universe where chili peppers fucking suck. This is what happened, man. And you're this trying is, to accept it. This is that say Exactly. You're trying to accept the shit. This is... This is what I'm talking about. This right here is the portal to the fucking shitty dimension. Right? This right here, like this I said... This was the start. This was on a fucking, like I said, this was on a whole nother dimension of shit. One hot minute, it was on a whole nother dimension. Well, they leave this whole other dimension and stay in took a one fight. fucking, one fucking dimension with all of this shit. They fucking stay the same. Yes, I took more out of this. Because it is better than Californication. It is better than By the Way, but no. It is fucking It's the better boring. one out of that <clears throat> part of the Chili Peppers. And it is. And no, it's not my number third favorite. I don't even know what the fuck I would... Like you said, I was trying to accept it just a second ago. Mm -hmm. But I was just blinded. I was, I, was, I was stuck in this other dimension. And I was trying to find something good about this other dimension when I had to come back to the original dimension and be like, no, god this damn it, sucks. there is much fucking better shit than this. Much fucking better. But if you had to do the VH1 countdown, that would be on there. If I had to do the VH1 countdown, all of these, it, it would be reverse. Mm -hmm. Reverse retrospective. It would be from 99 up. Oh my god. You need those fucking albums. Ah. <sighs> ah. But it's boring, god damn it. It's fucking sad. So the next one. The next one. John Frashante leaves. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Fuck. And now I have to say, like you said, this is my number three favorite. And I was totally wrong. I don't know what the if fuck. If I was were wrong gonna say that, I haven't even drank anything today yet. This one probably. If we're gonna take on the John Frusciante fucking Under the Bridge 2.0 sound, this one. Only because it sounds more like what would have been after this. In my opinion. In my opinion, this one is more experimental than anything they have done since fucking One Hot Minute. Because you have 
the fucking very first song on here, which totally fucking took me by surprise. Oh, what is that? Monarch of, uh... Monarchy. Monarchy of what? Rufus. Roses. Monarchy of Roses. <laughs> like, dude, that is so fucked up, I can't even read it. How are you going to do that with your fucking fonts? I don't know, man. Their font they, is like, so fucked up. They, like, white-outed the fucking word. All the O's. Every O on here okay, well, is we, whited right. out. Wow, that's fucking me up. Monarchy of Roses. All right. That's a fucking great song. You got a new guitar player on here. It's the first time you've ever had a different lineup since John the French guy comes back. Dude. I was taking a piss when you heard this song. First time you and were like, I, it was, what? It, was, it blew me away because I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Uh, it starts off with some pretty aggressive heavy guitar but then moves into this disco stuff it goes into this that nice was really really fucking good, good groove um but like you said this is the most experimental since one hot minute but yeah out of all of the post one hot minute albums this is the best this is the best and but at the same time because this is the end of a this is the end of a, uh, a generation, or uh, uh, a cycle, if you I don't know. Uh, they they were with Rashante for three more albums after. One this hot could minute. be your next bridge into something this great. This is because they're coming out with another album with this guy. So we'll see how that is. We will. But um, this one, the one that. There's three songs that stand out to me. Um, and they're the last two songs on the album and the very first one on the album. No, 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 no. no. There's, um... To me. Even You, Brutus. Is it Happiness? Happiness Loves Company. Happiness Loves Company. And then the uh, Monarchy of Roses and then what the fuck was that other one? Brenda's Death Song? Yeah, it was alright. Like I said, I'm almost almost dead. I'm gonna all walk down. That was a good song. This, it's a great album. But there's some moments that I do feel like those are songs y'all left off of Stadium Arcadia. But you can tell which ones those are. And they, those were the fillers to make this fucking album 15 songs long. This album uh, gives me a glimmer of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, there, what do you do? There's some interesting stuff on this album, uh, especially on uh, Dance, Dance, Dance. Dance, Dance, Dance was a good song. Um, Happiness Loves Company. Is that the one that sounds Beatles-y? Yeah. And which is the one with the really cool piano? Um, after that one, was that uh, even you, Brutus? Even you, Brutus. That one. There are some really, really awesome moments. That's the one where he was kind of preaching with the beat. Yeah, that was great. There are glimmers of hope on this album, but at the same time, it still hits the same Chili Peppers beats, familiar it, beats. It it gets boring. It fucking. But it is they the do most enough. It's the most experimental to keep you interested. Exactly, they do enough to keep your attention. Um, but there are many songs where two minutes in, you already know what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's some of the they yeah. just get too predictable. And but from when, my taste, I will say it's the most refreshing. Yeah, because since fucking it starts I'm off just great. repeating myself. It's the most refreshing they've sounded since fucking one hot minute. It starts off great with the Monarchy of Roses, and then gets a little standard, and then once Familiar. once Happiness Loves Company happened, I was like, whoa, whoa, what? Okay, uh, you weren't. I wasn't expecting it the first time I heard it. Like I was like, what? Yeah, and this then, is like I was looking. I was expecting more of the same. And in a way, you got that, but in a way, you did finally get something fresh and different. You got at least five to six songs that were something different. And that's a, br 
a breath of fresh air, I guess, compared to what we have been getting on the last, you can't say three albums, but you could really say four, because one was a double album. And, I mean, this one wasn't as much of a chore to get through like the last three. No, this one actually... It flowed a little better. The music was better because certain things stood out more. Like, the guitar wasn't the main centric thing, and the vocals wasn't supposed to be... Like, it was more focused on, let's just kind of have fun. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're already established. We know you're going to buy our record. And uh, let's just be what we be and do what we do. It's like I said, I, I'm done talking about that album. But so I Be I, With You, is that what it's called? I'm With You. I'm With You. It's. I'll call it Be With You. It's the Chili be Peppers on. discography. That's No, that's a fly. So I'll call it Fly With You. The Chili Peppers discography is very. Fly Pill With You. Very polarizing. Because to me, it starts off fantastic and gets brilliant. And then... Then it gets formulaic. It gets awful. It fucking gets awful. That's when that's when they were wanted to be bulk gum. No. They, they wanted to buy fucking Rolls Royces and houses. And but they made enough of that, dude. That with... Sugar fucking magic shit, like... The shit they did... They had the tour to pay off that album. I mean, fuck. It's... It... It's one of the most... Cons <coughs> consistently... Fantastic. And consistently... Misha. Consistently awful... Misha. Discographies. Of yeah. any band, of of any fucking band, because you got for for the first half it's consistently awesome, and for the second fucking half it is consistently bad, and boring, and formulaic. That it's it's like I like I even said the other day I'm listening to these Chili Peppers records, getting ready for the retrospective. I am dreading. The moment that I get to Californication. And it happened. And it fucking happened. And god damn it, was that the most boring two fucking hours. Or, or however long it was. It was about four was. hours. It was about four hours because you had oh, four albums to listen god. to. God. It, it was. It, with those, the first half, I was enjoying it. I was like, yeah. There were moments where I was like, yeah, it's starting to kind of bleed. The funk is kind of getting a little old. And then, and then... Blood Sugar Sex Magic happens, and it shows you how great they could be, and then One Hot Minute happens, and it shows you how great they are, and then Californication happens, and it just shows you what happens and when you stay the fucking same. You play it fucking safe, and you... John the French Guy happened on the next album. You fucking... You say, okay, we know what made us money. Let's just continue to do that for a while. And it... Fucking blows. It but fucking it made some blows. Money. It fucking blows. They're a stadium band now. That doesn't even matter, dude. They were yeah. a stadium band on fucking Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and that shit was great. That shit was great. There was no reason for for the second half of their albums to fucking suck as much as they did. No fucking reason at all. Especially when you get a genius like John the French guy back. The reason was they let him have full control on the next album. Well, not even that, man. Californication is a <laughs> boring ass retread of blood sugar sex magic missing all the right fucking moments that made blood sugar sex magic good and missing the... the Almost accidental genius of one hot minute. It's. What about by the way? By the way is Drick. By the way is fucking awful. By the way has moments that are like, damn, that could be really awesome. Too bad it's in this fucking song. God. 
uh, I recommend people. I mean, it's totally cool to like these later, later Chili Peppers albums. I mean, there's there's much younger people than me that grew up, and and Californication was their blood sugar sex magic. That's totally cool. That's totally fine. Like it. I it does not fucking do anything for me. It just they lose it. It, it, it. Everything is lost. I, I'm on, on, I'm starting to repeat myself now, just like they were repeating themselves for fucking almost 17 years, 16 fucking years. Fuck. So get over here and say a final thing about this, because at least we still have these Amazing ass fucking albums Yo, from self titled to Hot Minute. At least we have those, and I am glad. I love you, John, from the French guy. I love you, man. But this was a breath of fresh air. I know it's very blurry on the fucking camera right now, but. I'm With You was a very refreshing album. Because I was expecting more of the same. Yes, I got that. I did get a lot of the same, but there was a lot that was different. The guitar player took a step back. He took a back seat <coughs> where you had to be the fucking front guy. You had to be the one up there. You had to be that one douchey guitar player that's like, look at me, I'm playing guitar. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the guitar player I don't like. You want to be a douchey guitar player and show that you're, you have an attitude about everything and you're above everything and you say, I don't want to make anything that's going to become a product because that's what chili peppers are. And then that's everything you built your fucking career on and you walk away from it. And you say you're never doing music again and releasing anything. But then again, you recently just do that. He just went out and fucking did some solo shit and released his bunch of fucking albums. Mm. How are you going to say a couple years ago that you don't want to be part of a product? You don't want to do this. You don't like... Mission. What the fuck? Paper bags. So, I have to say... One Hot Minute was a really great album, and it was, holy shit, this is where this band is going, and then... Nosedive. The, the nosedive happened, the jump in the shark moment happened, and then we got a revival. This is almost The Force Awakens, in a way. No, Force Awakens is for the... Okay, well, this, this is the... Alright, this is the Force Awakens fan-made album. If it was made by a fan that was born when this album came out in 95. This is Batman Returns. Batman Forever through Batman and Robin. Batman Begins. <laughs> Hold up, I got some bad Batman movies. <laughs> Analogies, I can do this. Hold up. Alright. Alright, what we got? Good ones? Alright. Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Oh god. Batman Forever. <laughs> Both of those. That's Batman Forever. Batman Returns. Batman Begins. Let's hope they give us a Dark Knight. Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, actually. Actually. I would have ruined that for everybody because I don't like this one. Dark Knight Rises. Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> dude. I know that. Dude. Fuck. There's a lot of shit. Like, I just recently thought about this. Me and Tim always come back to this movie. We always right. bitch about it. 
I'm sorry, I got I have to say this. I just recently thought about this one moment. Okay. Bruce Wayne has a fucking massive terrorist attack on his Wayne Wayne industry stocks, right? A massive terrorist attack. Fucking Bane goes to his or Bane goes to like Wall Street and fucking does some bullshit and his stocks go down. He loses all his money the next day. How does no one think that this terrorist attack at Wall Street had anything to do with his fucking stocks? Hmm? Let me continue. Okay. You were following. You got it, right? <laughs> Whatever. Right. Just You're just listening. All right. <laughs> A terrorist attack happens on his goddamn stocks. That shit should be what all over do? the news. What do they do? Do they blow his stocks up? No, they fucking went in do there and fly punched. a plane no, in his stocks? No, they went in there and fucking held the guys up with guns and t told them to fucking make this transaction happen. I haven't seen Dark Knight. Alright, well I'm trying to explain this moment. I haven't even seen Batman Bane, Begins. Bane goes in there and fucking holds everyone hostage, pretty much, at gunpoint. Fucking punches motherfuckers in the face and shit and tells them to make this transaction happen. So it's legal. But then, that shit's all obviously on camera. There's news all around. And then, Wayne's fucking stocks, the only thing that got hit, goes down. And he loses all his money. Next problem. The fucking bank takes his car that he paid for. He is... Bruce Wayne... Listen, listen. He has paid for this shit. It's his goddamn property. The bank shouldn't take it. If it was owed, if you owed money on it, they would take it. If you leased it, they would take it. But if it's your property, they don't. He owned that shit. He had to have, because that motherfucker bought a goddamn motel with a paycheck in the first movie. And goddamn Batman Begins, motherfucker wrote a check for a goddamn motel. He just got in the motel and just wrote a check and handed it to the dude and said, this is my place, let's do what the fuck we want. So if he can just fucking buy a motel with a check, I'm pretty sure that car is paid for. So how's the bank gonna take his car? So, so out of all of the the <coughs> problems with the Dark Knight Hold up. that have been talked about for like four years now, you're gonna bitch about the bank taking his car? Yes, because it makes no sense in reality. The bank A would lot not of stuff take in that your movie car. Well, make yes, sense. but the most logical fucking thing <laughs> doesn't make sense. Uh, now, here's another thing. After he loses his money and the bank takes his car, same fucking day, his power gets cut off and fucking Repo Man take his goddamn furniture and put a fucking sign on his house that says this house is being taken away from you? Wait a minute. This house is supposed to be in his fucking family for centuries. They say that in the beginning of the first movie. How's the bank taking that shit? Mm. I have no fucking clue, man. I haven't seen that. Anyway, movie. that's why I say fucking, by the way, is the Dark Knight Rises of the Chili Peppers. All right, Brainiacs.